We've been talking this week about liberty, freedom that comes with knowing the truth. So why do some prefer to believe a lie? That's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. Before we get started today, let's pray. Father, we pray for all those in authority, for presidents, vice presidents, governors, mayors, city officials, law enforcement. We pray for all those in authority so that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We pray the blood of Jesus cover them and protect them. We pray for wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and we condemn every tongue that rises against them in judgment. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I was going to answer the question, why do people choose to believe a lie? All this week, we're talking about the knowledge of the truth. Well, let's go back to John chapter 8. Let's read what Jesus said. He said, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. <laughs> How he, you know, if, if he was alive today and he was on the, you know, evening news, the national news, oh, it would, it would start a firestorm. Well, it did no less in, in Jesus's day, but they didn't have the media Thank God they didn't have the secular media to try and report it, but they had it. They had their enemies. So why do people want to believe a lie instead of the truth? Because it's easier. It's easier to believe the lie than it is the truth. I've already given you several examples out of the scriptures, but I'm going to I'm going to give you some some more. Here's here's the number one reason people choose to believe a lie rather than uh, the truth. It's easier. Number two, because of their carnal nature, their carnality. That I'm talking about people that allow their flesh to rule and reign. Their, their carnal nature runs their life. It's not, it's not their spirit. It's the, it's the, it's the, uh, uh, it's, it's the, the flesh, the carnal nature, the Adamic nature, the fallen nature. Uh, go with me over to Romans, and I'm going to skip back and forth here. Romans chapter 8, and let's look at verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do minds the, thing, the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, death doomed, the law of sin and death. To be carnally minded means the minding of the flesh. They mind the flesh. It's easier to mind the flesh than it is the spirits because the spirit and the flesh war against each other. So they're carnally minded. They, have, they allow the Adamic nature, the flesh, the carnal nature to, to rule. Next, it supports their belief. That's why it's easier to believe a lie than it is the truth because the truth will more than likely counter what you believe. And we tend to give place to the easiest thing. It's easier to believe the lie because it, it corresponds to what you believe. And next, um, a lack of knowledge of the truth. You have no truth to compare it to. I've had pastors ask me, said, Pastor Cole, well, what do I do about this situation in my church? Or what do, we, what do I do about a, a teaching that somebody else is bringing, whether it's local, national, whatever? And uh, it, it's very tempting to want to counter it and charge it and, you know, aggressively uh, teach against it. But that confuses the people. And the people don't like it when, they're, when their pastor gets off on a tangent and starts arguing with everything and everybody. Uh the best way to handle that is to teach the truth. That's what I tell young ministers. Just teach the truth. Teach the truth. The truth will win out. The knowledge of the truth will make them free from error and sin. Just teach them the truth. 
it will eventually penetrate the darkness of the lie. And that way you're not up there ranting and raving all the time about uh, what so-and-so said. And I know it's hard because I've had to deal with it myself. When I hear somebody on TV, even on VTN, <laughs> I'll hear somebody say something and I'll just shake my head. I might tell Jeannie, I'll say, honey, that's not the truth. And she'll just tell me to pray for them, be quiet, pray for them. And you no, know, you, you, you want the truth. The knowledge of the truth is what made you free. The knowledge of who Jesus is the knowledge of what he did for you. And you want everybody to know that. And you don't, you don't like lies coming, you know, out, uh, especially over a network that you're responsible for. So, you, but you have to be so wise and, and not to judge or criticize. And I, I've had to repent lots of times. Uh, you know, ignorance of the word, lack of knowledge, not, not IQ, not intelligence, but ignorance, lack of knowledge of the word allows us to say things that aren't true. And I've been corrected many times by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, that would tell me, you know, what you said was not right. But he'd do it in a correcting way to, to correct me so that I would speak of the truth. I want you to go with me over to Job, if you would. I'm going to show you some... Uh, scriptural examples here of why people want to believe the lie instead of the truth. Now here's Job and he's talking to God and God uh, speaks to Job. This is Job chapter 40 verse 8. Now you remember Job, Job had a lot of half truths, mistruths, lies. He had, he had to swim through all kinds of stuff. His counselors were not telling him the truth. He didn't have the same covenant you and I have. He was raised under a different covenant. But listen to this example. And the Lord explained it to me one day, and I want to share it with you. Job 40, verse 8. Will you also disannul my judgment? Will you condemn me that you may be justified? Now, see, Job made the statement and we've all heard it the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord that was not true concerning God oh it's true that Job said it but it was not the truth concerning God God didn't take anything away but under Job's covenant and under his experience and under his counselor's advice he had been taught and told that God was his problem that God was killing his servants and God was sending the tornado and God was doing all this when in reality God was not. In the Bible, if you read the whole book of Job and study it, which I did years ago just to solve this for myself, God didn't do any of those things. But Job thought he did. So Job is operating under a demise here. He's operating under a, a lack of knowledge and lack of truth because the lack of knowledge, there's, there's no way to find the truth with a lack of knowledge. You've got to increase knowledge. You've got to change what you know. And if you have the knowledge of the truth, then it makes you free from error. Well, Job had been taught that it was his sin that was causing all these problems, that God was allowing the devil or God sending the devil and God wasn't doing either. He didn't allow or send the devil. The Bible says that Job broke his hedge down and the devil attacked him through that broken hedge. God set a hedge up, protect him. Even though Satan tried to get God to destroy him, God wouldn't do it. And so Job made a lot of wrong statements. In fact, the Bible even says that. It says, Job, you've spoken wrongly of me. But here's what the Lord showed me. Job, you have disannulled my judgment. You have condemned me that you may be righteous or you may be justified. Now, what does that mean? Let's, let's, let's meditate and translate. You've condemned me so you could be justified. Or what does that mean? 
If I believe that everything that happens to me, good, bad, indifferent, everything that happens to me, an extreme off balance God's sovereignty, or uh, God's in, involved, God's controlling everything, if I believe that lie, which is a lie according to the Bible, because everything that happens to you is not God. <laughs> It's real easy. Just get your yellow pad and draw a line down the middle of it and put on one side everything that steals, kills, and destroys, the devil, and everything that uh, brings life, God. It's real easy to distinguish which is God and which is the devil. If it steals, kills, and destroys, it's the devil. But everybody doesn't think that way because of a lack of knowledge, teaching, and training. So they automatically assume, well, God's sovereign. He's in control. He can do anything and everything he wants to, and everything that happens is the will of God. No. Not true. Everything happens for a reason, but it isn't God. So Job was corrected by God. Now, why did Job believe it was God? It's easier. It's easier to believe that God is behind your problem, that he's working out some mysterious uh, thing in your life to teach you a lesson. It's easier to give place to that. It's easier to accept that than it is to stand up and use your faith against it. It's easier to believe that everything's coming from God because if it's God and God is the one that sent this into my life, then who am I? I'm just a worm. <laughs> I'm just an unworthy worm. Who am I to stand up against this? Who am I to rebuke the tornado if God's sending it to cleanse, purify? Who am I to stand against the cancer if God's trying to teach me to be humble? Who am I to stand up against this? If it's God, it's easier, and that's what God said, that you can justify yourself, that you can be righteous in your own eyes, it's easier to believe that everything that happens to you is of God than it is to stand against the evil. Did you get it? Are you following me? I believe some of you are getting this revelation. So God said, Job, you've condemned me. You've made God out the bad guy. So you, I, I'm blameless. I'm blameless. I don't, have any, I don't have any fault here. It's not my fault. God's doing this to teach me a lesson. Then, then if God sent the cancer to teach you a lesson, then don't dare go to the hospital and try to get help. You'd be going against God. Now, I know that's stupid, <laughs> but some people believe that. Well, 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 God caused that tree to fall on my house. What was the purpose? Oh, he was trying to, you know, let me know he's not pleased with me. They, no, God doesn't do that. <laughs> that's not God. Well, so... If you believe that and the tree fell on your house, it'll show you that God didn't please with you. Then what did you do? Did you go out and thank God for the tree falling on your house? Did you, did you change your ways? No. Most people, when they have that kind of theology and they begin to try and analyze that, they don't change at all. They, actually, they go the other way. They quit going to church, quit believing in God. <laughs> God didn't have anything to do with it. I had a lady tell me one time, she said, after she heard me teach along these lines one day after church, she said, you know, I'm beginning to understand now. And he, she said, it just really makes me mad. I said, oh, she said, oh, not at you, pastor. She said, it makes me mad that I was so stupid. Now I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember. It's been so long ago what she, her words, but the general point was, she said, it makes me so mad that I was so stupid that I was taught so wrong that now I realize that if I had known the truth, my husband would not have died. She said, but I was told that cancer was, was sent by God to teach him a lesson or teach us a lesson or blah, blah, blah. And she said, so we didn't resist it. I saw, I saw a sign at the hospital several years ago. I was up there visiting someone to pray for him. And I saw a sign as I was walking by this meeting room and they were having a conference in this meeting room and the sign said uh, on the outside, the conference had a marquee and it said, 
learn how to cope with cancer. Now, I realize what they're trying to do. They're trying to teach people how to deal with this and, and blah, blah, blah. But I thought to myself, I meditated. I couldn't get it out of my mind. So I looked at the word cope. Basically, generally, the word cope means learning how to live with something. Learning how to live with whatever you're facing. So if you, you know, wrote it out in the true definition, learn how to live with cancer. Well, who wants to live with cancer? In fact, you don't live long with cancer. You die. Who wants to live with cancer? Who wants to cope with cancer? And then I, I, I researched it further. To cope with something, to cope with something is to apply an equal amount of pressure. You're, you're just coping. You're coping with a bad marriage. You're coping with a rebellious child. You're coping with uh, financial loss. You're, you're, you're coping with sickness and disease. You're, you're just tolerating it, putting up with it. But to overcome, now if the sign had said, uh, we're going to teach you how to overcome cancer, that would have been different. To overcome means to exert a greater pressure than the pressure coming against you. Do you see that? Co to cope means your, your stalemate, your equal amounts of pressure. But to overcome a situation means that there is a greater pressure applied pushing the pressure that's coming against you out of the way. And 1 John 5, 4 says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Jesus said, in the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So you're overcomers. You're not copers. I understand that you have to learn to uh, um, maneuver through certain areas in your life that you've never experienced before. I understand that. And I understand there's helps out there for you. There's, there's people that can help you with your, your mind, your, your soul, your emotions. There are people that can help you with your body. There's, there's medicine. There's doctors. I realize medical science is there to help people. But there's a, there's a, a greater revelation when you find out that Jesus took upon himself your infirmities he told you to renew your mind with the Word of God. He told you not to be anxious for nothing. There's a greater revelation in the book of Proverbs than vitamins, exercise. The Lord told me that one day. He said, you know, there's a greater way uh, than just uh, exercise and vitamins for longevity. It, it says, uh, merry heart doeth good like a medicine. <laughs> Laughter doeth good like a medicine. And wisdom and knowledge will give you long life. So you, you need to start with God first. Get the revelation. And don't believe that everything that comes down the pike is from God because it's not. You have to discern, well, Pastor Cole, well, how will I know what's God and what's not? I told you, take a yellow sheet, draw a, sign down, a line down the middle, and on, on one side, you put everything that steals, kills, and destroys. And on this side, you put everything that brings life. And you draw a line. You put devil on this side and God on this side. It's real easy. And if you find something in the Bible that you think contradicts that, then study it out and you'll find the truth, the knowledge of the truth. Okay. There is a... Oh, oh let me tell you this, uh, this example about... Why do people want to believe a lie? I probably shared this before. Uh, many of you know my testimony. I was born again February 11, 1972. And at the time, I was, in, I was a salesman for a wholesale liquor company. I called on all the bars, package stores, lounges, restaurant, hotels in Pulaski County. And I was my, I was my best customer. <laughs> I enjoyed my product and I enjoyed my job. And then I got saved. Oh, what a difference. I got delivered from my product and my job. But while I was in the business uh, and the company I worked for, a wholesale company, we had a wine sales team that mm, called on all our customers, not at the same time, but maybe during the same scheduled day. We each had a route. 
and I called on liquor stores and restaurants and, and uh, hotels. The wine salesman, we had a, we had a wine sales force and a, and a spirits sales force. And the, the wine salesman would call on some of the same package stores. And he would, and we both worked for the same company. We were friends. We knew each other. And there were other salesmen worked for other wholesale companies that had competing products and brands and promotions. And they would come into the same store, same restaurant, same hotel, same bar, and they would tell the owner or the buyer uh, that I was making a deal down the road uh, that was a better deal than what I was making them. They lied. But they were trying to, to defeat me. They were trying to uh, steal my sales. And so I came into this particular store, and the uh, buyer uh, just kind of looked at me, kind of, you know, waiting to hear what I was going to say. And they said, what's your deal this week? I said, well, here's the deal. The sales manager says, you get a free uh, fifth to a case. If you buy a case of this liquor, you get a free fifth, 12 fifths to a case. And they just looked at me and laughed. I said, what's the matter? He said, ah, you're, you're giving a quart to the case down the street. I said, what? Who told you that? Your, your competitor, your other liquor salesman. I said, that's not true. Oh, yes, it is. He said, you're giving a quart to the case uh, down the street, but you're only offering me a fifth to the case. Well, a fifth is smaller than a quart. A quart is larger than a fifth, and a quart costs more than a fifth. So the dollar value was, that, you know, they were accusing me of giving a better deal to the store down the street than I was offering them. I said, why would I do that? I said, that's dumb. Well, I believe them. And so I just ask them. Now, you got to understand, I'm not, at the time I'm telling you this, at the time this happened, I'm not a Christian. I'm not born again yet. I don't know God. I'm not saved. But I knew the truth as opposed to a lie. So I looked him in the face and I said, what that salesman was telling you is a lie. I can prove it. But I said, my curiosity, I, I'm, I want you to answer this question for me. Why? I'm telling you the truth. It's a fifth to a case. You say, oh, no, so-and-so says you're giving a court to the case. I said, that's a lie. This is the truth. Why would you believe the lie instead of the truth? Now, that's what I wanted to know. Why would you believe the lie instead of the truth? They're lying. I'm telling you the truth, but you're going to believe them instead of believing me. I want to know why. Now, they couldn't really answer hum hauled around about it, but the truth of the matter was, the reality of it, was they would rather have believed the lie than the truth because of their fallen nature, their Adamic nature, their carnal nature. It's easier for us to believe a lie than it is the truth. There's the spirit of truth. There's the spirit of lie. If you're not born again and you're of the devil, you'd rather believe the lie. Now, you take that scenario and apply it to any area you want to, but let's apply it to politics. Why is it that the liars, the deceivers, on the surface look like they have more followers than the truth tellers? Because the majority of the public is not born again. They're not Christians. And it's easier for them to believe the lie because of their carnal nature. Also, we believe lies because we are conned into believing what those liars are telling us. If you like your doctor, you can keep them. That was a lie. Read my lips, no new taxes. That was a lie. 
I did not have sex with that woman. That was a lie. We live in a world of lies because Satan is the God of this world. He's a liar. The truth's not in him. And so when Jesus comes along and tells you the truth, you have a hard time believing him that he's the truth, the, the, he's the way, the truth, and the life because a, your carnal nature, your fleshly nature, your demic nature, is, it's easier to believe the lie than it is to believe the truth. If you understand what, what the scripture says here, the knowledge of the truth makes you free, sets you at liberty. It sets you free from circumstances. Now, if you tell the truth and somebody else tells the lie, you don't have to prove they told a lie. All you have to do is believe the truth. But the culture is geared to lying. So let's take it one step further. Why does the news media lie? There's only one person that's had the guts to call it fake news. And, of course, they've set out to destroy him. But why does the news media like to lie? Because that's what you believe. You'll believe the lie before you believe the truth. The carnal nature, it's easier to believe the lie. It's easier to believe the negative, the bad, rather than the good. It takes more faith, takes more conscience, takes more life to believe the truth in the midst of a lying world. So we lie about our products, tell you things they'll do that they won't do. Uh, they lie about uh, somebody's personality or character, or they lie about legislation, or they lie about this or lie about that. So, you know, when you become a Christian, you carry all this baggage uh, into the church and you have to get delivered of it. You have to renew your mind with the Word of God. Okay, tomorrow... We're going to see about a warfare, and I've just been describing some of it, the warfare that takes place against the truth, the warfare against the truth. And then we'll eventually get to the spirit of truth. So join me for tomorrow's Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas. And wherever you're watching, Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.